a verse that comes to mind that is quite often brought up against Calvinists. James 1.13, let no one say when he's tempted, I'm being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. This verse is not teaching, it's not making a metaphysical claim. It's not saying that God does not cause people to be tempted on the storyline level. That's not the point of this verse. People think that this verse is refuting that claim of Calvinism because they're just falsely assuming that, well, if God has determined that something occur, then he's the one who's actually doing it, right? If God determines that someone sinned, then God's the sinner. And in this case, if God determined that someone be tempted, then he's the one that's doing the tempting. And I hope you can see, but that's not the point of this verse. Right? But that's that's how the Calvinists can answer this particular verse. The point, the point of the verse is not that God does not ever cause people to be tempted. So you guys have to recognize, the Bible forces you to recognize the clear difference between God and the transcendent position and the cause and effect relationship that he has over each and every moment of time and a particular cause and effect relationship that God has by participating in time on the storyline level. Okay, And so back to this idea of God not tempting people, and yet why do you pray for God to not lead you into temptation? Just stop and think about that. Why do you pray for God to not lead you into temptation? If you don't believe that's something that God ever does, right? Wouldn't that be blasphemous if you were praying for God to not do something that you don't believe he ever does? But of course, you do believe that um, God most certainly does lead us into temptation at certain times, right? He puts us through trials and he sanctifies us and grows us in the process. This is this is obvious. The Bible itself even comes right out and says that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, right? Does that mean that God is the one doing the tempting? Of course not, right? God can cause people to be tempted by certain things or certain other people. That doesn't make God the tempter. So this use of James... Um, saying that God himself tempts no one to try to disprove Calvinism's claim of God's absolute control of all things, including, for example, people being tempted, is a massive face plant, theologically speaking. And this brings me into another very, very brief point, and that is that God does interact on the storyline level. When God saves a person and regenerates them, that is by a direct work of the Holy Spirit on our hearts, right? So when God works that somebody believe, for example, or works regeneration, that is true of both the transcendent position and the storyline level, right? God is obviously sustaining it all and bringing it about on the ultimate level, but he's also actually doing something in time on the storyline level directly. But that is not the same thing that is occurring with, for example, when people sin. Or when he hardens a heart. God isn't using the Holy Spirit to harden hearts, right? He's hardening hearts through all sorts of other means that are on the storyline level, but God is not on the storyline level the one directly doing it. And this whole idea of the difference between God doing something directly on the storyline level, um, once again, God predestined the crucifixion, right? He predestined all the terrible things that people did. But does that mean that when someone tortured Jesus, that God was torturing Jesus? No, right? It doesn't follow. The only way the only way God would be torturing Jesus is if he directly on the storyline level tortured Jesus, but he didn't. Uh, he ultimately caused it. He ultimately brought it about, sure. But that's in the transcendent position, once again. Um, I asked earlier, why does it rain, right? Obviously, God in the ultimate transcendent position can be said to be bringing the rain because he's in control of all the storyline level reasons behind why it's raining. But God is not on the storyline level like pouring buckets of water over your head, right? <laughs> there's, there's clearly a difference here, once again, when we understand what God is quote-unquote doing in the transcendent position versus what he's quote-unquote doing in time. And it's upon that basis that I mentioned uh, in, in the past episode, I think it was on uh, Did You Believe Because You Were Better, one of Blayton Flowers' points there was, well, if you're going to try to credit God with all the good stuff, then logically you must also credit God with all the bad stuff. And I pointed out I have no problem quote-unquote crediting God with everything, including the bad stuff, on the transcendent position, right? The transcendent level, the ultimate level. No problem at all crediting quote-unquote crediting God with the bad stuff and the good stuff on the ultimate level. But when you zoom into that storyline level, right? The reason God is credited with the good stuff is because the Bible teaches very clearly that the only the only quote unquote good that is done is worked by God in the believer by the Holy Spirit. It's God is actually working in the storyline level. He's working on the hearts of believers. He is working. Um, he is working as both willing to do according to His good pleasure. Right. So on the storyline level, if that's all you're looking at, man is credited with bad because man is the one sinning, and God is credited with good because the only good that is done is by faith, right, and and by the Holy Spirit.